Paramount Pictures presents the Max Fleischer Color Classic, released July 12th, 1935. Dancing on the Moon. This is Jerry Beck. You're listening to the audio track commentary. If you don't want to hear me, you've pushed the wrong button. I'm here with Mike Kazala, our resident animator, cartoonist, and Fleischer buff. And uh, as if I'm not, I mean, I'm a big fan myself. And uh, we're looking at the credits, Seymour Nitel and Roland Crandall. Mike, any comments on those names? Well, they did a lot of great, uh, great work at Fleischer's. They were teamed up a lot. They were probably the uh, top guys at that time because that's probably who they put on the color classics, if you think about it. They put the best guys. Um, it's always amazing that Dave Fleischer receives director credit on every one of the Fleischer cartoons. Now, I'm asking that on, uh, facetiously. He does receive credit on every single cartoon as the director. But uh, what do we know about that? Well, we know that that's just not possible. That he was... He was involved in their production, and he had say-so over what went on in them, but the two animators that were listed were effectively the directors. It's interesting, though, the, uh, but when the Fleischer brothers were ousted in 1942, there is a absolute marked, marked difference in the style of the cartoons. There's a sense of humor, there's a vision, it's just gone. The, the best place to see that is the Superman series of cartoons where the, the first eight that were directed by Dave Fleischer are very cool and they're very science fiction and visual. And then suddenly with the first one, Japa Tours, that was uh, Famous Studios, uh, suddenly they're very literal. They use more rotoscope. They're about what's going on in the world at the moment. But they're just the, the science fiction aspects of it. Anyway, we're not talking about Dancing on the Moon, which we should be. Yeah. And uh, we should be noting that wonderful rocket ship, that great sci-fi Buck Rogers rocket ship. Here. Yes. One dollar to the moon. Yes. See, a dollar used to go further back then. <laughs> now, Max Fleischer was a, an inventor, and that does play a, a point in a lot of Fleischer cartoons. Although it really doesn't play a point here, except for the science fiction aspect of the rocket ship taking... Hey, this Animals is, to this the moon. is an example of what would have done, that shot would have been done with two camera passes. You mean the uh, the shot where he was looking through the uh, window? Yeah. It would have been one pass with the window completely black, and another pass of the Earth with them pulling the camera away with everything else black. Oh. Now, this cartoon, the first half is so sweet. You got all these lovey-dovey animals. You got this great song. And then you, poor kitty cat. It's, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, this is, looks like a cartoon. Like, I want to love this cartoon. I want to love. Look how cute this is. Look how great this is. Look at this great art. And yet, and here's a clever little sequence with the uh, three-dimensional planets Venus. that illustrate the, yeah, the, the, oh, breasts, the breasts of Venus. And there's Mars and Jupiter and the Milky Way. These are the kind of gags that would be used ad infinitum by famous studios <laughs> down the road. This kind of pun yeah, gag. Except if famous, they would have put a sign up that said Milky, Milky Way. Way. <laughs> and this song is... This is another multi-pass scene. Now, the song on the soundtrack is, Mo I think, Moon Over Miami, or... And it's uh, Kate Smith. Everybody. That's supposed to be a reference to Kate Smith, for those of you who don't know. That was his theme song on the radio. But it's an interesting idea, having this counterpoint to all this merriment. And if you're depressed about something, being where people are celebrating is just more depressing. Well, that's how it feels during the holidays. <laughs> during Christmas and New Year's. You know, we're all, we all feel like this. This is just so damn sad. But you know, these old cartoons in the 30s usually have a happy ending. You know, we're watching this, going along with it, thinking, well, he'll probably meet up with his gal at the end and it'll be a happy ending. But let's find out. We'll find out as we go along. And this is very, very cute. In fact, I'd say sick news. Fleischer's turn at mean. Now, there's that, that was an example in that last scene when he got hit and the... the 
They're moving all the time. They're always, you know, that, that jumpiness that they had in the early animation. Do you, you know why that was, Mike? You know, that, that kind of like bobbing. The, the moving of, holes? Yeah, moving holes, right. It was a mandate, I don't know from whom. Maybe they just thought it would make it be more lavish. Right. But be that as it may, it's something you associate with them. It looks like it belongs there. Maybe it's because we've seen them so many times. I, I, I love the singing in these films. The, I don't know if these people were professionals or not, because they don't sound it. <laughs> they, don't, they just sound like people who were in the office at the time. That's the feeling I get. <laughs> Some of them were. <laughs> but it works. Now, if this was a short subject playing in a theater, even right now, I don't see how you'd not watch this. I think you would watch this. You know, it's the first moonwalk here. <laughs> Literally. Don't worry, little cat. I'm sure there's a happy ending. Oh, now they're going back. Well, I'm sure something good will happen to our little friend who's left his wife behind. Having his honeymoon all alone. God, that's depressing. There's a nice shot here when it lands and comes back to Earth. There's a three-dimensional shot. It's really cool. Uh-oh, I guess that's what they were doing on the moon. Not merely dancing. <laughs> Is the word dancing a uh, euphemism for another word, perhaps? Gimme, 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 gimme. Dancing on the moon, <laughs> meaning uh, making love on your honeymoon, perhaps? It isn't bad enough. He was lonely, he was depressed, he was all upset. She's got to beat him up. What a sad ending. A Paramount picture. 